Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Simply Pod Logical, a Simply Neological podcast. Hello, everyone. Today's episode is brought to you by, surprise, surprise, Hollow Taco. Hollow Taco. Hollow Taco just uh, announced, revealed, released its brand new unicorn skin collection. Mm -hmm. It's available right now at hollowtaco.com. It includes three iridescent top coats, so you can make any nail polish iridescent. Uh, a really? dark uh, purple indigo nail polish called uh -huh. Indigo Away because oh, you I need like to maintain name. some Social at least distance. six feet of distance from away from mm. people. Yeah. And a white polish that will make all your dreams come true. What kind of dreams? Well, I mean, do you like cereal? Too bad. <laughs> <That> <laughs> because <is> this <laughs> white polish is not milky it's white. It's not milky white. <laughs> That's right, Ben. Good ad read. Thank you. Thank you. So available right now. I mean... For the time Actually, being, maybe yeah. not. Um, as the time of filming, we're already over fifty percent sold out of the limited edition collector's box. Yeah, but the, so, there, there are yeah. plenty. There, there should be no issues with stock of the individual yes, items. So, but you're right, but the collector's box. If the collection box quickly. is gone, then you can still get all the polishes individually for now until those eventually sell out. But <laughs> I think we're good for a bit. And we should probably also acknowledge that as of right now, Hollow Taco is taking orders normally as of as of when we're filming this podcast yes yeah so right now it's the evening of sunday march 15th everything is normal right now from an operations perspective but nothing is ever normal but we're, yes. <laughs> we're monitoring the situation closely we're aware of what's going on obviously and uh the priority of you know the health of the employees working there and mm -hmm. the customers is a top priority so yeah if anything changes we'll let people know and if we have to suspend yeah. operations we will but for now we're still mm -hmm. taking orders and fulfilling yeah them. and if we get word from our shipping couriers that there is going to be a, a significant or a known amount of delay as a result of all of what's going on in the world then we'll definitely let you guys know on socials Mm -hmm. yeah. So today's podcast was going to be about something else random like our jobs or I think maybe it would have been about Holo Taco, but it just felt strange for us to talk about anything other than what's going on in the world. When you're stuck right at now. home for two weeks, <laughs> what the hell do you do with yourself? <laughs> yeah, right, so like please like we're not going to be offering any sort of like uh, you know medical advice or advice on how not to get sick or anything like that we just want to take a more lighthearted approach mm -hmm. to this and maybe give some advice on what to do if you're stuck in the house for a while yeah ben or i are not medical health professionals or public no. health experts I feel like we've had to say uh, that a few big times surprise <laughs> but you know just putting it out there just like i'm not a licensed nail technician i'm also not a public health expert yeah if you want some actual uh, public health advice go uh, Who's that cute doctor on YouTube? You must know, Dr. Right? Mike. Dr. Mike, yeah. <laughs> cute doctor. You think he's cute? Well, I know Phil. Phil vouched Damn. for him. Phil told me he's cute. Oh, yeah. That's right. Correct. Well, mm -hmm. I, this is my issue with Phil DeFranco. So on his podcast, Wait, he well, interviewed. What? What? So he interviewed Dr. Mike, and he goes, Dr. Mike, what's it like being such an attractive man? And they all laugh, and he gave some answer. He has Anthony Padilla on. Anthony, what's it like being so attractive? And Anthony jokes about it with like 20 rings on his hands. Why didn't he ask me what it's like to be so attractive? Christine? I don't know, Ben. Maybe he should have <laughs> just asked you, what's it like to be so smart? I know. <laughs> anyway, but gotcha Dr. There. Mike seems like he's actually, uh, I haven't a watched doctor? many of his videos, but I don't even know if is he's he a med school. I don't know. Or is he like Dr. Phil? I'm not vouching for him, Phil. I have no idea. I'm just sorry. I just, I have no idea. I don't really. He, he appears know. to, I think he's made a few videos now at this point about like media hysteria versus what you should actually know okay. about this. So I think he's, he's one of the few resources I'm aware of on YouTube who you can maybe refer to. Who you can you, trust? Wow. There's not many of those on YouTube. I, I don't even. Uh, Shocking. <laughs> maybe you can trust. YouTuber you can trust. Can't I can trust see that anyone that good looking. But, uh. <laughs> Maybe you're probably better off just referring to your local health authority for updates on mm -hmm. the current situation. That's what I've been doing anyway. That's what we do. Yes. So yeah, I thought today we would just give people our perspective on what this experience has been like from our perspective up here in Canada. And then just in the second half or 
transition to we ask people online to give some suggestions of what you would do if you're stuck mm -hmm. in the house for the next two weeks or so more. So we've curated some of them. We'll share them with you. We'll laugh at them together <laughs> and, you know, maybe try and smile a bit through these times. <laughs> yeah. So first of all, how, how are we doing, Christine? How are you feeling? Like, I'm fine because I never <laughs> leave the house. <laughs> well, that's the meme out there, right? Yeah. Like introverts everywhere. Like I've been training Rejoice. for this my whole life. <laughs> But it's, I mean, it's a different thing though, right? Like I get it. I've been, I've been the person who stays home for long periods of time, just watching Netflix or whatever. But there's a big difference between doing that by choice and being told yeah. or instructed that it is a bad idea to leave the house, right? Just the psychology of it is different. Yeah. Like maybe I'd stay home by accident for three days straight. <laughs> Not even <a> thing. <laughs> but if someone tells staying me staying home for three days straight, <laughs> is that a challenge? Now it's staying home for two weeks straight challenge. Not clickbait. Yeah, but if someone tells you you have to do it, that's different. Then than you just never want to do it. Yeah, accidentally doing it by yeah. But I think we're fine. We we sort of saw this coming. I think a little bit before the rush of panic and people rushing well, to the store. That was our fault because we watched the movie Contagion. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Three, two or three weeks ago, before this was kind of wild and everywhere. Well, we knew what was going on in China. To we take saw it what it was. Yeah, we saw it in China, but we it definitely wasn't in North America as it is today. Mm -hmm. We watched Contagion. We got freaked out. We went to Walmart at ten thirty at night <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and right. just like bought canned food because one thing we don't have much of is canned food. That's true. Because we're usually just getting like fresh vegetables or hummus yeah. or you know. Yeah, we didn't oats. clear. We didn't clear them out of toilet paper just for everyone out there. Like I, I guess it's too late at this point but i've seen so many clips of people buying baskets full Two of years shopping of, carts full of, of toilet, toilet paper. paper how much maybe they're gonna eat it did that, they buy any food you need to buy no. food to poop like like all they seem to be buying is I toilet hear paper if you boil toilet paper you can actually turn it into rice so maybe that's what they're doing <laughs> what that's a joke <laughs> great <Obviously>. joke <laughs> hey Benji. i mean like yeah and there's I've also seen some articles now that are super discreet, like things like uh, events like this bring the worst and best out of people, I think. That's my theory. I think it's really interesting what we're finding out about people during these times. So there's an article in the, the New York Times a few days ago about this guy who bought, I think, 17,000 bottles of hand sanitizer and his plan was to resell them and make a <laughs> bunch of money. Now everyone's just ridiculing him. Well, now eBay and Craigslist, Kijiji, those third-party uh, sites have basically put a stop to this because they realized how messed up it was. And there was this article where he's like basically complaining that he doesn't know what to do with it. And I just like, I, it's just shocking. Like, I mean, <laughs> just looking at this as an opportunity to make money off of people's desperation to buy toilet paper and hand sanitizer. There are some like real scumbags out there. His parents probably bought a bunch of Beanie Babies 15 years ago, so... I don't feel bad for what? him. <laughs> That's the first thing you think <laughs> You know all those people who bought a bunch of Beanie Babies thinking they would like make hundreds of thousands of dollars off of them one day? Yeah, I remember yeah. that being a thing. That's probably his parents. <laughs> <laughs> so is that just a fancy way of saying his parents are probably really stupid? I never said that, <laughs> Ben. <laughs> you know, I did see a funny tweet, though, about this where it's like, hey, are you really mad at people like taking all the toilet paper for themselves? It's actually a good analogy for our broader society where there's huge inequality between who owns stuff. I thought it was kind of interesting. Hmm. I'm not sure if that holds up, but yeah, you know, even if that person got that toilet paper or hand sanitizer by legitimate means, or maybe he inherited a bunch of hand sanitizer <laughs> oh from his God. parents, it still doesn't mean in a fair and just society, there should be so much concentration of toilet paper and hand sanitizer in the hands of so few people. Right. You know what we I mean? We should equally distribute the toilet paper <laughs> during these hard times, Ben. So anyway, we bought a reasonable amount, amount of, of toilet, toilet paper. paper. <laughs> just a reasonable amount. We did buy canned food just to make sure we had that. We bought some like frozen veggie burgers. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like this is, this is like, I think a lot of people were looking at this as if it was going to be like a blackout scenario where like you need to go into emergency survival mode. Like where you need bottled water. Yeah, like the lights I mean, are I, still on. To be fair, you might need bottled water if you live in an area where you can't drink tap water. I, I get, right? Maybe you like can just buy a other filter. Situations. I, I, I'm just saying, I guess I'm still optimistic. I don't know if this means I'm optimistic, but this isn't like some civilization or, you know, 
hello there. <laughs> this isn't some doomsday type scenario, you know? And I, I get like excited at the prospect of that sort of thing. And I like, like planning for it, but this <laughs> isn't that, right? I don't want to freak people out too. We should be mindful of the fact that I think a lot of people are really stressed out now. Mm -hmm. And it's really messing up like, it's easy for us to say this, we can work from home. Well, YouTube, we can certainly do from home. We're going to be working from home for our desk jobs as well. Yeah, that is also something that I guess has sort of affected us. Um, the Canadian government recently said that they encouraged federal government employees to work from home. I think there has been some confusion on that point, but oh, department really to department, it seems like there's a lot of agreement mm -hmm. going on that all yeah. the schools in at least Ontario public schools are closed for two weeks yeah. following March breaks. So anyone who has kids, right? And I know schools yeah. are closing across the U.S. and internationally as well. But for us in Ontario, they closed last week already. Yeah. I, I guess what I was trying to get at, though, is like we're in a situation where we can stay home and we're going to be mostly staying home for the next two weeks. Yeah. I think there are people in positions where... They work in like the food service industry or something, or maybe they have an employer and they need to keep going to their job. And I, f I have a lot of sympathy and I feel for those people right now who are feeling like they have to leave the house, even if their judgment tells them they would be better off staying home. Right. Yeah, it's, it's tough mm -hmm. because if everyone truly did stay home, like everyone, then we would be lacking in a lot of services and things that people still need. Like everyone's going out and buying food. Who do you think selling it to you? Like, how do you think <laughs> the food is getting on the shelf too? Yeah, right? when we stocked up on groceries a while back, I was just thinking of all the cashiers and what mm -hmm. a terrible position they're going to be it's in awful. during these also, rushes. Also, students right now, anyone in university, the university that we went to, Carleton, has completely suspended mm -hmm. its on-campus classes. I think Ottawa has classes. as well. They're doing it all online now. Most of Ontario universities, I've seen that. But I yeah. specifically got a message like from Carleton. I guess I'm still on their mailing list from like <laughs> s seven years ago. Okay. Um, but yeah, they're all switching to online classes. And I still think exams, exam season is coming up soon, right? That's still kind of an unknown for a lot of students they don't really know how they're going to do that because i don't think there's ever been fully like entire classes but this, curriculum spin online exams i think what this is also proving though is that there's a lot of stuff that we could be doing online and remotely that we just haven't out of stubbornness like even the working yeah. from home thing i think this is going to be uh you know unintentionally this is going to be a giant experiment in how many people could be working from home and not having to work in mm -hmm. an office space right yeah it's going to be a push for innovation that's Technological right. Technological innovation. Yeah. Like, Figure it out. You got there, no choice There is now. <laughs> a bit of a silver lining to some of these things, I yeah. guess, right? Just like you were commenting on, there was some country, was it Iran maybe, that basically just let a bunch of people yeah. out of prison. Yeah. So it was like, wait a second. Tens of thousands of prisoners were apparently released. I think it was Iran from, this was like two or three weeks this ago. It's a now. while back, yeah. And I remember thinking like, there's a few things to unpack with this headline. Well, is it basically <laughs> an admission that those people didn't well, need to be? That's why I read further into the article, like who exactly are these prisoners? Yeah. Because anyone who reads that thinks like, oh my God, now we're all going to die because prisoners have been let out. But <laughs> sure. that's just, you know, clickbait <laughs> trying to do its work there. Uh -huh. But if you read into it, it says that the, the government there specified that they were either low risk or nonviolent offenders. So mm -hmm. don't worry, basically, they they don't pose a risk to the general public. It's just better for health and safety of everyone if we don't contain them in this spot and let it spread. Yeah. So yeah, so it I, makes you question, okay, so now we have, we've just released people who don't need to be imprisoned, but they've been in prison for years. <laughs> yeah, well, if your argument is that people should only be in prison out of a risk of public safety and not right. from a more I guess we're not getting into like an abolitionist argument here. <laughs> no. It's just, it brings up a lot of other questions, a lot of social questions. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, and I also feel bad uh, back on the student thing you mentioned as well. It's not just like, like the interruption and the confusion of doing things remotely, but I saw a few posts, I'm, I'm into sports, and just thinking like there are college students or seniors that are just like losing those sort of big end of high school or end of college moments you know like what about prom when is prom normally i don't, I don't, it's I don't later. even know it's late isn't it april i don't, I don't I know i can't remember <laughs> it's been a while but, since i went to a prom yeah, Christine. <laughs> proms might be affected and that's a huge thing for young people yeah yeah yes menchie i know 
But uh, yeah, like, no. It's easy it's, to say, and especially as the meme goes, and I know, like, because I've definitely made this joke on Twitter <laughs> at least once, that, oh, great, I get to stay home, or like, or I'm encouraged to stay home. What's different? This is great. But generally speaking, most people still leave the house sometimes, <laughs> even yeah. if you're an introvert like me. Mm-hmm. Like, I love staying home, painting my nails, you know, getting shit done here. But I still, like a lot of other people, I go to my office you might go to school mm-hmm. you know you might go see family or friends i see my sister i like we go we leave the house we w- like to go for walks we go to the grocery store we go to the gym we do go places yeah. so this is a major change and you're a you're a creature of habit too and i think there's probably a lot of people out there who feel like they have a routine they really like to stick to in life and if yeah. that gets thrown off that can kind of make you spiral out and affect your mental health as well yeah i think even though obviously the goal is to practice social distancing so you don't spread it and hurt people who are most vulnerable to Mm -hmm. it such as elderly people or people with compromised immune systems Mm -hmm. i guess the reality is that like most young and healthy people might be unaffected by it but still the unintended consequences of, of this aside from infecting others is when you are told to stay home for that long and a bunch of events or maybe things you were going to are canceled, it changes your routine. And all of a sudden, you might be faced with certain like routine struggles, mental health issues of being isolated. What if you live alone too? Mm-hmm. Sometimes if you live with someone else, say there's a power outage, it can be kind of fun. Let's just say, I mean, <laughs> like you can turn it into like, okay, well, let's just play board games like in the dark for, yeah. for two nights. Let's or light some whatever. candles. Right. Like you can kind of have fun with it if you live with other people, assuming you like those other people you live with. But if you live alone and now you're told like everyone just stay home, that can be extremely literally mm-hmm. <laughs> isolating and just like not good for a lot of people's mental health to not be partaking in their usual activities that bring them some joy. Sure. But I, I think the if I want to leave people with any thought here, it's that if you are a young, healthy person, you're not staying home for your benefit. You're staying home for the benefit of yeah. other people. Like you I'm said, not, yeah, older I know people, that. I'm just, I also want to acknowledge the people who are staying home and they're like, it can be tough. Yeah, I yeah. get it. It can be tough to not see your friends or go out or all these things you were planning to do i just i can't when i hear you say that i i agree but i also can't help but hear like i've been seeing on twitter a lot recently clips of like young college age kids going out to the bar still like everything's fine and i think a lot of them are just acting like you know i'm not worried about this this isn't going to affect me and i just that i find that infuriating you know you you can't take a two-week break from you know having your craft beer downtown and mingling with a bunch of friends like Mm-hmm. Please, I understand there's some people where like the social isolation is going to be an issue. And one good thing you, you could do, and I've seen some groups popping out, and here's the bringing the good out of people side of it, is you see some people reaching out to like the vulnerable people who can't leave their house and trying to offer some assistance or like food delivery to those people. Oh, yeah, that, that, so that's a good idea. That's a good thing. But yeah, this idea that you can take a two week break from going out to restaurants on the weekend and going out drinking with your friends and hanging out that shouldn't be that difficult if that is going to make the difference between just slowing down the spread of this to flatten the curve as they say right Mm -hmm. statistics yeah yeah the survival the literal survival survival curve curve in this case (laughs) literally and figuratively because yeah it's not like we're going to avoid people getting it's just if you slow the the rate at which people get it it won't overwhelm the healthcare system as much or at least that is the Mm -hmm. objective yeah speaking of of people who've been i mean not directly affected ben or i know no one so far who's actually no. contracted the disease no. covid19 i don't well, think we even I mean, mentioned justin it. trudeau's wife <laughs> but uh, we don't personally know her we do not personally know her but no. i think i think it the seriousness of it changed in a lot of people's mind because in the span of a few days you had the basketball season being canceled mm-hmm. you heard tom hanks had it I think and that's when all, most people kind of went crazy. <laughs> and then I think it was just a few days later that we see this breaking yeah. headline on CBC saying that Justin Trudeau's wife, Sophie. Yeah. So our prime minister's yeah. wife yeah. was found COVID-19 positive. Yeah, apparently she's doing fine. She's doing fine and recovering. Yeah. But yeah, it's when you see people in super powerful positions. But Donald Trump is negative, Ben. So it's not that bad, right? <laughs> Do you believe that? <laughs> If he had it, would he tell anyone? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) 
he always seems kind of unwell too so it's hard to tell it's he hard. always seems like Doctors a little short of breath still don't know yeah yeah i think it's all the adderall he does though maybe okay. that's the Wait, cure let's not <laughs> speculate on <laughs> you know when i get political but yeah speaking of people in our lives personally affected mm -hmm. i think where you were going with that is yeah so my sister is not covid19 positive <laughs> but she three weeks three weeks ago three and a half or two weeks ago something like that she left on a cruise before it got too crazy yeah. at least in north america it was overseas already but it wasn't the mm -hmm. case yet really in the states and canada and so her cruise went to I think they they docked at fort lauderdale or something so it was around the florida yeah. in the caribbean nowhere too exotic <laughs> yeah so when they were coming back this was before canada passed a ruling saying no cruise ships docking until yeah. july 30th so she managed to get off fine there wasn't any cases on her cruise ship but there was on another one that had recently docked like the day before in san francisco yeah so i was freaking out because i'm like is she gonna get home like does she have this disease because yeah. all i hear is this cruise ship headline at the time and so she got home everything was fine um but her employer just at her employer she works for the federal government too Mm -hmm. out of an abundance of caution as <laughs> is the line these yeah. days they told her to just stay home even yeah. though like she didn't have any symptoms and there was no one on the cruise ship stay home for um, two weeks probably right? yeah so it's, yeah. it's been more than a week now okay so how is yeah. she doing have you, she, you been she's talked fine to yeah we facetime yeah is she going a little nuts though or? she is yeah. yeah she is going a little crazy yeah <laughs> it's like really dry in her apartment too so that's been bad <laughs> We have eczema, so it's it's, it's hard, Ben. <laughs> the Rodenberg girls and their bad skin. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so she's found that tough. But, I mean, I think it makes sense. Her employer was kind of ahead of it. This was before the government yeah. was actually telling people to stay home. Mm -hmm. um, and before the public health expert who spoke recently in a press conference for Canada said the cruise ship people should all stay home. They hadn't said that yet. Yeah, you'd be kind of crazy to go on a cruise ship at this well, point. Well, now, yeah. <laughs> that industry is just wrecked. And also, we should acknowledge that we canceled our... Oh. We were supposed to go to Florida <laughs> two weeks from now. I'm so sad, To visit guys. Rob and Corinne. From Threadbanger. Our good friends from Threadbanger. And also your grandmother. Our family vacation yeah. is ruined because <laughs> of this virus. <laughs> yeah. But it, it was... Yeah, I mean... I think we recognized kind of early on that we were probably going to have to cancel. I think our original plan was to go to like Disney World or something. Yeah, the last we were going to go to you Disney be. World with Rob and Corinne, <laughs> just like kids for a few days. And that got canceled pretty quick. And then there was a period of time where Ben and I decided, okay, maybe we could still go just mm -hmm. visit my grandma, but we're not going to like, you know, big amusement parks. Yeah. And then it just quickly turned into, yep, yeah, we're not leaving the country. Yeah, really. And, and, not even just for us, but like Rob's immune compromise due to the health things he went through last summer. Yeah. And your grand, your 90 year old grandmother too is also not someone right. we would want to expose Put to this risk. as well. So my grandma is currently trying to get home. Yeah. Because she normally comes back to Canada to live here for six months. You're a so. YouTuber. Why don't you get the private jet? It's bad for the environment. <laughs> ben. <laughs> Never been on one. But... So my dad was going to go down to get her. Yeah. He was going to go down right after we were planning to be there. He, he goes down for a bit, a bit of golfing and shopping, and then, you know, comes home with her. Mm -hmm. But now he's not going to go down, he's and they're trying just to trying to get her on a rush flight back. So because she's Canadian, so if anything were to happen to her, she wants to be in Canada yeah. for just healthcare and family reasons. She's fine, but yeah. it is a huge risk. Sure. And it's just, yeah, it's causing a lot of distress on my nine-year-old grandma who, you know, doesn't know how to use her cell phone. Although I don't want to out your grandmother, but it seems, maybe I'll just speak more broadly, anecdotally, I've noticed a lot of older people who don't seem to really be taking this so there's like the two yeah. poles there's like the college kids who still want to go out drinking i'm noticing quite a bit of and then there's like the boomers and older who just like oh, i've lived through i remember the war <laughs> this doesn't seem so bad and i feel like it's all of us in the middle who are actually taking this really seriously i'm surprised that the older population the ones who are either about to retire or going to aren't taking it more seriously when they look at their investment portfolios <laughs> Like, well, they can't uh, retire anymore. Hello. <laughs> they're going to keep on holding on to those millennials' jobs a little bit longer. Well, I, I mean, I think they're taking it seriously from uh, seeing the economic impact mm -hmm. of it. But Did you see that hashtag trending, hashtag boomer remover on Twitter? <laughs> That's pretty dark. <laughs> it's pretty bad. 
okay. I mean, it's okay to laugh at these things for like a couple seconds. <laughs> I laughed. <laughs> Just a few seconds. Okay. My good. dad is a boomer and I still laughed. Yeah. No, you, yeah. Okay. I'm sure he, I'm sure he'll, he'll laugh if he had Twitter, but he doesn't because he's a boomer. Good thing. Okay, boomer. <laughs> All right, Boomer. So let's see what people suggested you could do if you're stuck at home for the next two weeks. How about that? Let me know. I need some ideas. All right. Snuggle Loaf on Reddit says... Snu snuggle. We could snuggle. We could snuggle. <laughs> Forget what she actually wrote. Let's yeah. just snuggle. snuggle. and make bread. It'd be, be a snuggle loaf. <laughs> Uh, they suggest spring cleaning or at least organizing all the random stuff I bought this winter looking at you overflowing nail care drawer <gasps> Organizing my nail polishes. I could take all 3,000 of them off the shelves dust them and put them back Yeah, I have to say Wanna I'm help? someone who's been complaining about like not having enough time to do stuff around the house and just clean up So yeah, I think this is a kind of boring and very practical suggestion, but it I actually like it, makes though. a lot of sense This is a good idea. House. This is what we definitely need to do because there's just cat hair everywhere. That's right <laughs> Also catching up on reading binge watching old favorite movies to keep spirits light Baking and napping. Christine, Does, why don't you start baking? Ben, this sounds like you wrote this. <laughs> Does it sound like me? Catching up on reading, <laughs> binge watching favorite movies like The Godfather, keeping spirits light. <laughs> the Godfather. No, you're going to float away. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just making fun of how Ben talks. Uh, no, I like this. Yeah, there's. I think there's only so much like... I think a lot of the suggestions are going to be and a lot of what you're seeing out there is people just assuming they're going to sit at home, uh, listen to music, reading books, watching movies. I think there's a limit on how much of your day you can just spend consuming things. I think you also have to like, you know, feel like you're doing something productive as well. I think right. a lot of people will be working from home, but even if you're not and you're just sort of self-isolating and you don't have like some job you need to be doing, I feel like you need to give yourself something sort a of A mini project. Yeah, give yourself yeah. some projects. Start a YouTube channel. I'm just kidding. <laughs> or not. <laughs> Maybe don't do that. <laughs> but I also think, yeah, this is a nice opportunity to like... Yeah, I might reread my favorite book or something, or I might just hang out listening to music, which is something I don't really do as much as I used to. I feel like I used to just sit around and listen to music and not distract myself with other things. Mm. But these days I sort of only listen to music passively while I'm doing other things. See, I think that's the more practical approach, though. Play some music while we spring clean. <laughs> yeah, if you're just trying to be a, like efficient. But sometimes there's something to be said for, you know, slowing things down and just being a little bit more in the moment. You know, you don't need to be on your phone on Reddit while watching a movie, while also having your computer open looking at something That's else, what right? That's we do every night, Ben. <laughs> I know. I'm calling us out right now. <laughs> That's what we do. Maybe we should just read a book. I, I, I couldn't even tell you the last time I, I read a book. I feel like I do so much reading online. Sometimes I'll listen to audiobooks or like long form podcasts, but... Yeah, it's been a while since I actually just picked up a book and actually actually read. I don't read books unless they're on Netflix. Wow. That's brilliant. <laughs> <Just kidding>. <laughs> Divorce. <laughs> no, I didn't mean it like actually, that. Actually, so here, here's a fun game. Sometimes you hear like people say, if you were stuck on a desert island mm -hmm. that I guess has a VCR and a record player. A desert player. island without the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. But if Thank the ocean you had the virus... <laughs> you were stuck on an island you could only take one book one movie and one album what would they be can i take an ipad as the book <laughs> what if there's a, a no. digital book on the ipad no a book you need to take a book a paper book the book that i cut she's open gonna take where's my... waldo or something <laughs> <laughs> the book that i cut open in my school hacks video three years ago and i put cereal and food inside <laughs> You would hide food in the book and take that to the deserted isle. Yeah, okay. smart. I see how you're here. Survival your, your, skills. We're all playing checkers and you're playing chess, yeah, right? Simply. Checkmate, bitch. <laughs> all right. And then what? <laughs> what? What album would you, you take? Stop laughing. No. <laughs> what? What? Yeah. What music? If you could only listen to one record, also like I guess you're not really My an YouTube album person. Music subscription. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna go well. I think. You're not an album person. All, I don't eh? listen You're... to music anymore. Buy albums. I used to when I was forced to go to like Sunrise Records and buy albums. <laughs> forced? Who was forcing you to go? <laughs> I just mean that was your only option oh, to consume music. Is like you would just have to buy the album. Before There's Napster. no such thing as getting one song. So now I don't think of it in albums anymore. That's kind of something we've lost, actually. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people just talk about the new single from Ariana Grande. 
there isn't that experience of, you know, Doja checking Cat. out the, the new Doja Cat. I have no idea what album it's on. You should see it. If you if it looks good from the front, you should, you should see, see it, from it from the, the back. back. Yeah. <laughs> but when you used to get an album, I mean, I'm not old enough for this, but like the experience of getting a record too, you'd have like the big oh, album records, artwork. Ben. I have a record collection because I, I think there is a difference in the sound you get from playing a record. There's a warmth to it. Mm-hmm. It only kind of matters for some. So, music, what album you know? would you bring to the island? We're, with we're no not viruses? done with your answers yet. So, you didn't give us an album. You didn't give us a book. Would you at least give us a movie you would take to this deserted island that does, has a VCR? Does my Netflix subscription count? <laughs> okay, we're not getting any real answers. How about you. Charms for the Easy Life? <laughs> <laughs> so you can watch yourself. It's just so you're, bad. You're it's so, so funny. Weird. It reminds me that things aren't as bad as that movie. <laughs> Living on the island isn't so bad because look at that movie. <laughs> wow, this is so weird. You're such an alien. Are we having fun, though? We're having fun. We're stuck at home. Okay, because we're going to do this for the next two weeks, Ben. We're just going <laughs> to have just gonna a podcast pump out podcasts. every day. <laughs> Let's film our lives for the next two weeks. Okay. Here, I'll give you my, my pretentious answers for what. Can't wait. Yeah. So I think the strategy here is you want to take works of art that can be interpreted on As multiple levels survival skills so i'm i'm not a saying <laughs> it's my favorite movie but a movie like inception by christopher nolan that i really enjoy and i really like that i think you can interpret a few different ways would have more replay value if i'm stuck on an island until the end of time and can only play one movie over and over again right hmm. yeah like spoiler alert if you haven't seen them, it came out like 10 years ago. You shouldn't have to say spoiler alert, right? But the movie really hinges on whether or not you think Cobb, the main character, is awake or in a dream at the end of the movie. But then if you go beyond just that, there's actually a few different paths that can take you to that point and a few actually different and very emotionally different interpretations of the film when it comes to his wife and whether or not she was right or wrong mm-hmm. about his dream state Let's so you want to stay mentally stimulated on the island i do that is what i'm trying to say okay. well you're just going to get bored on the island i didn't sneak food in my book like well, you, i'm just but... gonna try to get off the island <laughs> okay if y'all got a boat so that's that's uh my movie uh my book would be my favorite book anyway but it kind of works on the same level is uh pale fire by vladimir nabokov and it's a book about, uh, it's kind of this, uh, it's meta in a way, like you, you read a poem, the book starts with just a long poem, and then in the poem there are notations and footnotes, so the story is told through the footnotes to this poem, but the footnotes are written by a different author, and I don't want to give it away for anyone, but you come to learn that the, the author leaving the footnotes is not a reliable source of information, so you have to sort of pick up on the story hidden within the poem and the footnotes. And it's it's basically a puzzle of a book, but it's so beautifully. He, he's also, he's just such a good writer. Is that, like, that, uh, is that like Mr. Robot? You have an unreliable narrator? Yeah, actually. That's so, I mean, that is true of Mr. Robot. Although I feel like they didn't, that is an excellent show, by the way. I would recommend Mr. Robot to anyone. I don't want us to give away the ending. But I feel like the ending has a very interesting twist that they probably didn't do a good enough job of leaving you clues to. It, it was a bit of a cop-out in a way, I thought. Well, let's not ruin it for people. No. Watch Mr. Robot. That's a good show. If you're yeah. stuck at home, watch Mr. Robot. Watch Breaking Bad and Mr. Robot are the two best mm-hmm. TV shows we've watched recently. Yeah. Not The Good Wife. <laughs> Well, okay, we're going to talk about The Good Life after I tell you the album I would take, just to tie it all together, would be uh, Blood on the Tracks by Bob Dylan, released in 1974. Course, Bob, Dylan. Bob Dylan, my favorite musician, cause, mostly cause because you, he's you, a poet. Or because you think you look like him when he was younger. There's a picture of him that looks like you. You're tired. Uh, the very first, Bob Dylan's first album, which was not successful and isn't very good. Uh, there's a picture of him that kind of looks like me when I was a little chubbier and a little bit younger. I th- I think. I th- people have told me this anyway. Maybe we'll put it up right here. What do you think? <laughs> maybe? Maybe a little bit? Okay. Anyway, so 1974, he releases Blood on the Tracks. This is right after he's had a uh, not-so-nice divorce with the wife who he had children with, Sarah. 
and uh, he he has never admitted that it's about his divorce, but uh, there's a famous quote from one of his children saying, like, listening to the album is like listening to his parents fighting. But anyway, that's awful. So it is a sad album. So, so maybe you, you I think I, I think that? I'd be pretty sad on that desert, especially if I'm alone. Usually you're You'd alone. Be just in sad I don't have you watching with me. movies and reading a book about <laughs> poems and footnotes. <laughs> so I'm listening to Blood on the Tracks, a very sad album, because I miss you so much. And uh, but I would be there, wouldn't I? I think usually the scenario is you're stranded alone on the desert island. Well, I'd have food. You wouldn't. <laughs> Anyway, just to complete the thought, the album, I think, similar to why I chose the movie and the book, works on a level where uh, Dylan had just gotten into painting and had a teacher who taught him this technique of painting where you show multiple perspectives at the same time. And when he went into writing Blood on the Tracks, he also applied this to his music. So the first track, for example, Tangled Up in Blue, is a song uh, he once introduced at a live concert saying this is a song about three people who were in love with each other at the same time. But when he says he and she and early one morning she woke up, he was laying in bed, you never really know exactly who he's referring to out of those three people, let's say. So it leaves a lot of room for interpretation. And also it's just an amazing album, probably his best lyrical album from a, yeah, from a lyrical standpoint. I think it's his strongest album as well. So there are my sincere answers. Christine, I'm not sneaking Netflix or Cheerios <laughs> in a textbook. <laughs> I'm going to outsmart you in your weird, complicated scenarios. <laughs> How about you tell us about the good wife, Christine? It's not good. <laughs> so <laughs> when Christine was on her YouTube break and just sort of shutting off her brain. Uh, I she... decided to start shows that I've just never watched before because, I don't know, like I just feel like I missed out. So The Good Wife <laughs> came out like so many years ago. There's like a million seasons of it uh -huh. and a million episodes in each season. It's really ridiculous. <laughs> it's it was like 22 good. episodes. It's a lot of episodes. And I always thought it was like Grey's Anatomy, but for lawyers. <laughs> That's how I <laughs> is, describe is it. Is it? <laughs> kind of? Kind of, yeah. In the sense that it's kind of like fluffy, like a soap opera almost. Kind of, yeah. I mean... To their credit, there was some cases that were relevant during that time. Like they, mm -hmm. like they did one about about Bitcoin when that was a big thing a few years ago. Um, yeah, there was a lot of things that they were trying to pull in, like current social context and culture. So I thought that was interesting, <laughs> especially when you're watching a show that started in like I forget 2008 or just like a really long time ago. You notice these things and you think like, wow, this was made a long time ago. <laughs> you know what's funny about that show that so christine would watch this at night and we have a tv in the bedroom which probably isn't a good idea but uh i would often just like watch these episodes with you because you put them on before bed and i would laugh at ben them. would just start laughing in the yeah. middle of the show <laughs> but there's like so there's this guy in the a lot of the show will will gardner right yeah i can't believe i know this <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> who's supposed to be like this attractive guy that all the other women want to sleep with what and you don't want to sleep with him he's no dr mike <laughs> oh my god okay but you know that really throws me off in a show when you have like beautiful women fawning over this like kind of schlubby guy it didn't make any sense to me it's just i don't know ben like don't judge <laughs> hey i'm not above watching trashy tv show i'm not trying to are judge. you calling it trash oh absolutely this gray's anatomy it's trash but that's okay <laughs> Do you know what happened in the last episode? It was so unfair. Of, of Grey's Anatomy? Izzy. <laughs> Stupid I've, bitch. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. Okay. Alex would never. <laughs> he would never leave Joe. <laughs> Shonda. I have a message for you. Yeah, reach out. Shonda, I hate you. <laughs> no, but like, so, like, I used to watch Jersey Shore, and we just watched that, uh, that uh, the Netflix Love dating show of Love is Blind. Yeah, watch Love is Blind for the next two weeks. <laughs> it's okay to consume trash sometimes. It's like junk it food. You just can't mind. have too much of it, right? And uh. you don't have to be someone like, I used to say like, oh, I like Jersey Shore, but I'm watching it ironically. Like, who? no one's watching it sincerely. Everyone's watching it because like they're making fun of them. I don't know. I watch Teen Mom people. sincerely. Really? <laughs> yeah. But like out of sympathy for the Maybe situation these young girls yeah. is in. Yeah, that's a different. I've seen some episodes of that show. Uh, yeah, it's pretty depressing watching that show. And it's interesting. Like I think later on after the first season or two, 
it seems like the show is a little more self-referential and they sort of acknowledge the fact yeah. that all of them are basically just making a living now from being on the show. They broke the third wall, or they, yeah. as they say. So now you see like all the producers on the show and how the logistics kind of work, which I think was a very smart move on MTV's part. So the third wall or the fourth wall? The third wall. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know. I used to be a child actor and I still have no idea. <laughs> Love is Blind was uh, was a good trashy TV Love is show. Blind too. If you're looking for something to watch. Love is Blind and so are you without your glasses. <laughs> you're, you're holding that one in for a while. And you write that down. <laughs> Let's see what other ideas people got. Enough of our trash TV. Uh, Hannah Bell on Twitter says invent new tea combinations. <gasps> no. That is a good idea. Good. That's a smart. Thank you, Simply Hannah. scientific. I, just, I mean, I've already done a video mixing all my teas together, but I could just mix like a few teas together and invent things. Yeah. yeah. So you have like how, ma tea how logical. many kinds of tea do you have downstairs? Like 500? I, I haven't counted. It's yeah. been some time since So I've if counted. you multiply them by all the other ones you have, you can have like 250,000 combinations of tea or something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> I like that idea. Uh, Hannah also suggests you could cross stitch. I don't really know what that is. It's like it's not knitting, right? It's stitching on a on a board. Yeah, so you have a uh, a canvas, a white <laughs> sheet that has a bunch of little holes in it, and you're basically stitching thread through the holes and usually an X mm -hmm. and then just making by making each square a color or each unit How on the grid. How do you grid. know this? I used to cross stitch. What? Yeah, I've never told you that about me. Isn't that weird? What did you stitch? I was a weird kid. I don't know. I just what, was into like, weird. What patterns? I used to, as a kid, was it bananas? No, it wasn't bananas. <laughs> don't demean my passion for cross stitch. So no, what did I'm, you I'm make? kidding. I very briefly cross... My mom was like super into knitting and stuff. So I think I very briefly like tried long stitch and cross stitch. So what did you make? Did you make yourself a little scarf? I can't remember. A little Some hat. tiny little thing. I was really young. I, it was probably like a tiny little tapestry type deal. Why'd you give it up? Because uh, I probably realized I'd rather play basketball than <laughs> cross stitch. <laughs> Not to say there's anything wrong with being a little boy who wants to cross stitch. Or, or I used to like garden a little bit too. I would help my mom in the garden. So uh, mm. that's something you could do. You got to no, leave the house. Don't leave the house. Though, right? no, you can kidding. leave the house. Just you got to stay away from other people. Yeah. So yeah. Why are we in the same room? Why wouldn't we be in the same room? You just said stay away from other oh, people. Well, you're not a person to me. You're my non-person. What, am I an alien? Yeah. I can't We're contract each the virus because I'm just not human. <laughs> no, like when you're in a relationship like this, like you sort of make a deal that you... If we're if we're gonna get sick, we gonna die together. We're, we're, yeah, we're, we're in this together, suffer. sweetie. <laughs> we gonna get. We've been sick together many times, like over Christmas. <laughs> Although we're not married, so like we're not in in sickness and in health. Oh yeah, definitely so if I get not. sick, you could just I just fuck right <laughs> off. <out of> <laughs> okay. We're definitely not in sickness and in health. Game over. <laughs> you know, Hannah Bell is also our Lady Dork Asgard, as she likes to be called. Also suggests that maybe you should start baking. I'm going to bake some protein balls. <laughs> Is that a joke? Or are you actually going to do that? No, I think I actually <laughs> want to do that. I saw on Instagram that yeah. someone made like, it's like oats, but little balls. Basically, you know, like the oats I make, but uh -huh. protein balls. And then you put them in the oven and then you put like a little bit of cinnamon or cocoa yeah, powder on top. Usually you bake things in the oven. Yeah. Yeah. That's, well, yeah. <laughs> Christine the other day sends me this link saying, this looks so good. And it was sweet potato brownies <laughs> sounds disgusting no it actually sounds so good because sweet potatoes are sweet right and then you just put cocoa with them and I it's guess like if the cocoa just instead of using the... like flour and a bunch of sugar and butter you use the sweet potato which like mashed up kind of is like a nice patty you know like potato mashed potato it's just so genius all right let us know in the comments if you've ever made sweet potato brownies let let me know if they're any good send me a recipe all right on Instagram, Ms. Fit NYC, I would maybe spend the time learning a new skill. Maybe start learning how to knit, draw, or play an instrument. Play an instrument. You do that. I do. Maybe I should. I haven't picked up my guitar much since uh, we started dating many years ago. Yeah, because he just serenaded me, and then, you know, after he got it, me, he's it like, did its never job. play this again. <laughs> I used to play music, I think, more as like... An expression of my unhappiness, I think it might be fair to say. But so 
you don't play it as an expression of your happiness then? No. What do you do as an and expression? And I think that says that's happiness? also why like some of my favorite albums and records are sad, on, like sad I literally shit. gave one of the saddest albums ever as like my favorite. Why album. were you so sad, Ben? <laughs> Because you hadn't met me yet. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and now you're just so happy. You have no, you, you don't do anything. You don't play music. You don't listen to Bob Dylan. You know, I've been thinking for a while of uh, learning to play the piano. Hmm. But, you know, music, uh, here's the thing. I was mostly a drummer and I can play guitar all right. Those are like the two ways of being an okay musician without really learning musical theory. <laughs> So I think it would be a real challenge at 31 years old to try to learn an instrument and to really properly read music. You could try and become a TikTok star. All right, next question. <laughs> this might sound stupid, but play Chopped. What's Chopped? Find ingredients around the house that you don't use and try to make a meal out of them. I used to play with my friends when I was younger. It wrecked the kitchen, which upset my dad. But you know, this is from Wind Platt. On sweet Twitter. potatoes and cocoa powder do we have it you want to go yes. find it yeah i'm playing chopped and i'm gonna make sweet potato brownies <laughs> isn't chop <laughs> this doesn't sound like a game to people who can't afford to just have a lot of food in their house i think it's just trying to, to make do with what you have so say you have like a can of beans and rice and yeah um salmon yeah. <laughs> See what kind of those most random things. <laughs> See what kind of meal you can make. <laughs> okay. Maybe, maybe we'll try that. Well, if you have craft dinner and cheese, I used to just always throw those together and it was a fancy meal. Well, craft dinner and cheese does go No, together. but like extra fancy cheese, <laughs> like aged cheddar. I found cheese and I found craft dinner. <laughs> wow, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, shush. Uh, Shadow Links 516. Yo. Sort and delete all 5,000 of my that, emails. This is where it's at. This is actually what I should do. Because tell, me, tell me right now, right how now, many unread emails are there on your phone? Has it gone up? 78,211. <laughs> wow. Isn't there a limit to how many? I'm testing it every day. <laughs> we'll see when I get there if Apple That's calls insane. me up. Also, a good reminder, uh, if, you're, if you find Christine's email address... Uh, don't expect her to see or read your email yeah sorry guys <laughs> <laughs> okay just tweet me uh amanda c on twitter says clean and do house repairs play with my kid paint my nails yeah. oh wow who would have thought of that <laughs> uh play with my cat and study my medical terminology book for exams these are all really good ideas mm -hmm. yeah a little bit for you know the house a little bit for the kid, a little bit for yourself, the nails, your cat. Don't forget about your pets and studying. That's for you too. Yeah. That's great. Well-rounded answer. Yeah, Amanda. I might study your medical terminology book too. <laughs> I don't think so. We're going to study ep epidemiology. How do you pronounce that? Epidemiology. 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 <laughs> epidemiology. <laughs> I need to the study. The epidermis? Are we going to study? No, no. Yeah, no, the epidermis. <laughs> All right. Uh, from Vegan Love Bunny start learning a new language you could use this to talk about french learning in canada test levels mm. for the government how cities vary and how bilingual they are indigenous languages quebec culture france versus quebec french mm, ben la la. Right. tu voudrais avoir une conversation en français benjamin uh, non je ne pense que non je pense que non <laughs> my french is not like i can read French and I can mostly understand when I hear someone speaking French, mm -hmm. but my ability to communicate myself in French is very poor. That's common in the government, at least in mm. Ottawa or if you're outside of Quebec, yeah. let's say. But I think uh, what Vegan Love Bunny is getting at is a lot of jobs in Canada or Ottawa specifically, if you're going to be working for the federal government, it really helps and is an asset to if uh, you can... be able to communicate in French. Right, but I think it's it's at a certain standard, right? Like there's government testing that determines to what degree mm -hmm. you are bilingual. Yep. And I, I think Ben could pass. Oh, like, yeah, I could yeah. get my Bs if I needed to. I'm not in a position where I need. Uh, no, but if, if you did, if you took the test, mm -hmm. I think you would still be considered bilingual, even though you're not fully fluent. No, you're right. I would probably so get the like threshold the lowest is different. level. You're right. The threshold is different, but it's like you just need to be able to understand others and like read an email in French. And mm -hmm. as long as you can communicate back and forth, even if one of you is speaking English and one of you is speaking French, as long as you understand each other, 
that's generally pretty good. Yeah, I mean, once you're a manager, there is more of an expectation sure. that you can communicate with an employee who could only speak mm -hmm. French to you, for example, right? So, but we're not, neither of us are at a point or interested in a career path that would lead us to supervising other people. So I no. think it's less important. Although your French is quite good. It's because I went to French immersion. So yeah. that definitely helped me growing up. Yeah, from grade one through eight, yeah. it was French immersion. Yeah, and what, high school was half French. So what? What is your language profile? Have you done the tests recently? Uh, years ago. Yeah, but, but you're like CC something. Uh, I think it was BCC. BCC. I don't know. Okay. No one knows what we're talking about, but yeah. C, actually, <laughs> yeah. A is worse than C. Oh, that's right. right. It's yeah. it's reverse. So it C goes, C is better. <laughs> C is just go A B C and then exempt. Yeah. If you're so good, they're like, oh yeah, we never have to test you. Yeah. That's if you're completely fluent, but yeah. we're I, I don't think I have a comment on uh, France versus Quebec French or Quebec culture. I've never <laughs> been to France, um, but I have heard that they have completely different types of slang there. Mm -hmm. So even if you are like Quebecois and you go to France and you try and communicate and you both speak French, it's like you're just speaking a whole other language. That's what I've heard. Yeah, Or like France French kind of looks at Quebecois French as slang relative to the more proper sure. France yeah. French yeah. they speak Good over point. there, right? Yeah, I guess maybe there's a little bit of like... I think that's what I've heard. Like your language is subpar to ours, yeah. maybe. And we, I've had friends who have gone to France on like exchange programs and they try speaking French over there and the, the like the people they interact with there will just start speaking to them in English which is kind well, of rude in a I way right like I you're trying you're making an attempt to speak to them in their language and they're like oh tourist I'll just speak to you in English that happened to me once when I went to Montreal because my really? my French is very like anglophone it's obvious quand je parle français que je suis anglaise parce que mon accent n'est pas très fort yeah, it's, it's obvious that Christine isn't a native French speaker because her accent isn't very good. My accent's not very strong. Not yeah. very strong. Okay. Yeah, but thank you for translating. See, <laughs> you understand French. But um, so I went to Montreal and just like for fun ordered food in French. Uh -huh. And then the waiter just spoke to me in English because uh -huh. he's like, clearly this, this bitch is English. <laughs> <laughs> but then I just out of because I was practicing. So I just kept speaking yeah. to him in French like I wanted to speak French. And he just like... <laughs> didn't want to humor me and just like wanted to get it over with and would only speak to me in English even though I was trying to speak to him in French and he That's was clearly French. That's weird in Montreal although there you can get away Montreal is a very interesting city to visit if you're interested in visiting Canada. Montreal. Montreal and you do not have to speak French to get by in right. Montreal. Right there is a lot of English there too. Yeah absolutely. Yeah. All right. I mean, I guess that's something you could, there must be a bunch yeah, learn of free a resources. Learn a new language. Yeah. Why don't you just go on this podcast and see if there's other languages where people have um, entered community captions for? Because right now it's open to multiple different languages. That's so true. people have translated our past podcast videos in German and Spanish. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool. Hey, you want to learn a language? Just uh, read, <laughs> read the podcast transcript. I'm not sure that's the best way to learn a language, <laughs> but uh, there's probably other free resources online. Sure. Yeah. All right, what else we got from Left Witch Kelsey? Uh, learn some basic programming. There are a lot of mm. great resources online. So this is really an extension of the language question. Why learn f some dying language like French when you could learn computer language of the future? <laughs> Oh, sure. Okay. Let's just <laughs> stick with your computer language. I'm, I'm being flippant there, by the way. French people don't get mad at me. But there is a ton of value in learning how to oh, code. Oh, yes. I wish I learned that in school. Mm -hmm. I, it wasn't really available when I was in school. Like computer programming wasn't a thing, really. Yeah. Yeah. And we use it daily in yeah. our jobs now. People always ask what people who are into computer sciences ask me what computer language we use. Mm -hmm. So we use SAS and SQL. Mostly. Yeah, so I, I prefer SQL. And I've noticed lately there's some departments at uh, StatCan who are... Stata is one or R? Yeah, R is one more people are seeming to get into because I think it's a, like a more open source anyone can get. Do you want to just explain for just the common layperson listening, like what is a computer programming language? Oh, I'm, I'm not qualified to give an explanation here. Just but Just, just to give an words. example, we're... Uh, I guess in our role, we're somewhat data scientists in that we're manipulating large data sets to find trends and manipulate the data into a storyline. So uh, often the level of programming we're doing isn't like computer science programming. It's more like if this condition is met, then do this. 
and then that will spit mm -hmm. out maybe you just want to condense your data set into a smaller one that's easier to manage or you want to run frequencies on how often two variables interact we're doing some pretty basic stuff when it comes to the programming we're doing i would say yeah but i mean programming is used in so many different avenues from like websites like that's all computer programming sure. language to what we do which is basically just telling a computer how to pull out the data we need and present it in the way that we want mm -hmm. so you have to ask the computer to do that and it's always like if this variable is this then this variable should do that mm -hmm. but if it's this way then do this way yeah it's it basically it's, it's like logic. a language it's logic logic language it's simply, closer to math simply than data logical there you go wow <laughs> simply <laughs> sass logical <laughs> all right i like that suggestion um, then from Thunderchild on Twitter, it might sound crazy, but you could paint, paint your, your nails. nails. What do you think? Are you going to do that in the next two weeks? You think? I think so. Think this this times? manicure has been on for a week. Yeah. I need to peel it off. Do for a change. A week? A whole week. That manicure is so last week. But it's so pretty. Look at it. Unicorn skin. That is quite nice. You did a little nail art there. I How know. sweet. I was showing off that not milky white, you know, you can do one stripe down the middle. <laughs> okay. There's no mid roll ad for it's Holo. not an ad it's just my life <laughs> ben like holo taco isn't just an ad of mine it's like my whole life and passions all right next one from dad logical that's, that's not my daddy <laughs> uh do a hundred layers of nail polish oh my <laughs> you know what now might be the time christine you know what dad logical that's not a bad idea a <laughs> hundred layers of holo taco maybe yeah, I could I could take two weeks and see how many layers I could get. <laughs> That's right. All right, next one uh, from N Mickey Mouse. I'm blown away by how PG all of these suggestions <laughs> are. Yeah, I emoji crying emoji. Are we gonna get any uh, Corona baby boomers? So I keep seeing this joke out there that like we're gonna see a bunch of baby nine months from now. Should we unpack this like Christmas? Yeah, that would be a bunch of Christmas. But is that a bad thing? I don't know. Do you if not your birthday is around, around Christmas? Christmas, I mean, for the child, maybe they don't want their birthday yeah, around Christmas. Yeah, Rexic. Then you then get you, gypped. Yeah, yeah, you only get one round don't of Don't do gifts. that to your children. <laughs> but this gift sort of implies to me, like, is this like a married person thing? What does that have to do with it? Well, I'm <laughs> maybe you'll see where I'm going with this. Do people only have sex during, like, blackouts and natural disasters is that the she's, implication she's here? just saying that if you're bored at home what else do you do then oh. screw <laughs> i don't know <laughs> yeah but okay i guess but i guess it only makes sense if you're already living with the person because if it was just someone you're dating or random people well that's definitely not happening there there will be no, no tinder Christine, hookups that's that's not you know you can love yourself and that's okay Next question. <laughs> what about all the, the Tinders? The Tinders. What, what if, about what all the tin Tinders? <laughs> <laughs> what if like Tinder activity is going down because you can't hook up with random people anymore? You have to practice uh, social distancing. Yeah, it's really What it's if the app is there. just losing all of its members? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right? Well, that, Uber, all those sort of. Uber, uh, Lyft. Yeah. Yeah. Bumble. What's that one? Grinder. <laughs> How do you know that one? <laughs> All right, next question. Uh, Pearson on Twitter says, puzzles. Honestly, my dream is to just puzzle for a couple of weeks. So I'm going to go out and buy some so I don't run out if it happens. What do you think? Are you a puzzle person, Christine? I mean, like, I, yeah, I thought I was the puzzle. <laughs> Remember we bought, uh, where, what happened? We bought that? a holographic puzzle once. I thought or, you were going to make a video. Maybe out someone of that. sent it to me. Now I can't remember. It might have, it might have been both. But it's cases. like, it's a thousand piece puzzle that doesn't have any illustration or anything you're no. putting together. The whole thing is just, uh, just a holographic flat surface. So you have to use like, well, it's not angle. actually flat. It's like those tiny little, um, like plastic divots that shift when you change it back and forth. You know what I mean? So you can kind of tell by how it reflects holographically on that specific piece of where it should kind of fit right. in. But that's like such a hard puzzle like to complete, right? you would lose right? your goddamn mind. But maybe that's what we could do during these hard times. <laughs> when I was a kid, speaking of weird things I was into, uh, 
I used to be really into uh three three D puzzles. Do you remember three D puzzles? What's a three D puzzle? So the pieces were kind of like foamy, but you mean Lego? No, no. So it's like as Lego's more. Lego's probably cooler than three D puzzle. Okay. Because like three D puzzle pieces, you fit together, but like you fit it into a structure. So like you build like a castle. You never heard of a three D puzzle? They kind of. I was yeah, deprived. I, I was, don't think I was that really took off. Too busy acting as a child. <laughs> That's right. You didn't have a childhood. I forgot. <laughs> All right, maybe maybe we're gonna complete that holographic puzzle. I might be into that. Thank you, Pearson, for your suggestion. Uh, Pika Liku on Reddit says, "Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing, and so on." What is Animal Crossing? So, Animal Crossing is a video game coming out soon that I guess a lot of people it's... are excited about, and I I only. But why are they excited if it's not out? How do they know it exists? It may have just come out. What's the hype? Well, I, so the reason I'm including this because I was surprised how many people I saw commenting <laughs> that they wanted to play this game. So there Guys, must be some is, crossover. An, what am I missing out on? Animal is it like Menchie Crossing? So it's it's a video. It's a Nintendo uh, game, so you can get it on the Nintendo Switch. Like the thing you have in bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that we use in bed? <laughs> I sometimes play Nintendo Switch in bed. Every Very night, very exciting. Bed, don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> Every night while we're watching The Good Wife. But uh, so this game uh, kind of uh, people will get mad at me for comparing it, but kind of similar to The Sims in the sense that it's an open world game. Like there's no linear like I'm trying to beat the bad guy at the but end animals? of the level. Like you live in a town full of animals and like you're collecting things that and you build way a more house. Fun. I yeah. should have played that instead of The Sims. Probably. Huh. Yeah, it's probably a better game. So should we get addicted to games during this time? Maybe we should. <laughs> How are we ever going to get out of this phase, though? What if we all just get like addicted to knitting and games and baking, <laughs> and then and then the work. world is like, okay, everyone, go back to work. It's Productivity fine. just plummets. No one ever works again. <laughs> just but Animal Crossing is soaring. Maybe I'll get Animal Crossing. Maybe I will. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you could play it too. Maybe I'll steal your Switch. All right. Thanos minion on Reddit says banana life hacks. Obviously. I upvote. That's a great yeah use of your time. What I've you... only made like three of those videos, but you know, what's a fourth? <laughs> We're not saying make a video, just, you know, you got oh. two weeks at home, just, you know, you know, do practice, some hacks with bananas. Practice peeling bananas. <laughs> can what? you use a, a, can you use a banana to protect yourself from the coronavirus? <laughs> what is Troom Troom's take on, <laughs> on COVID-19? <laughs> yeah. I am, I am waiting for Troom Troom to come out with a video on they're crazy enough to do it, right? They, they totally are. would. And they would make no sense and put people in danger. Like, use a banana peel as a face mask. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get infected if you eat 10 bananas in the morning. <laughs> Throw bananas at other people to maintain distance. <laughs> <laughs> we really got to get a hold of the true and true people. We're not going anywhere, though. I want to go to Ukraine and We're find them. We're not flying anywhere We're going to... right now. <laughs> We're going to Odessa. I found you guys on Instagram. I know where you are. They're not listening. We're going <laughs> to. Or are they? <laughs> All right. Uh, Manning Second on Reddit says, I've been considering adopting a cat for a while. That <gasps> should it. distract me for two weeks. Do it. I actually really adopt like this one. I don't think you should adopt a cat just because you're like, oh, I'm going to be home for a while. Yeah, but if you are already thinking of adopting a pet. It is a good time because you want to spend the most time you know, getting your cat accustomed to the home and making them feel comfortable before you go back to work and live your life. So yeah. that's important. Yeah, like when we got Menchi, we kind of altered our schedule in a way where like at least one of, one us, of us was, was home, home for like at least the first month of her, of and us adopting her, I think. And one of us always slept in the, the tiny we guest did. room in the condo we with her. We babied her so much. Yeah, we're like, we got to raise our little baby. <laughs> and we only like very, like we'll get into, I think we're going to have a whole episode on cats at some point. Yeah. Uh, so we'll get into this. But yeah, the way we sort of slowly introduced Menchie and Zyler to each other, Menchie just stayed in her own room. We were always like we were there with her like all the time. You're right. And you mostly slept with her for that yeah. first month. I think you should adopt a cat. <laughs> you should adopt a cat and you should baby it because you can't over baby a cat. Right. No. Christy? Because I remember early on when we got Menchie, I would like pick her up a lot. And you were like, you shouldn't pick her up too much. She's always going to want to be up on your shoulders. And she is. <laughs> and she is. Now we can't have dinner without Menchie on Ben's shoulders. That's right. Little baby. 
Mm-hmm. I'm just glad that cats can't get the virus, apparently. Yeah, there were mixed reports early on about whether or not a dog could get it. Because I guess one dog... Because if you come after my children, <laughs> then it's I will over. destroy you. <laughs> I guess at one point there was a report out of China that a dog tested positive for it. But it wasn't clear if that was just a false positive test because yeah. the dog was owned by someone who was... I got an email from our vet saying that they had no real reason to be concerned yeah. about our animals. So okay. I was like, okay, okay. thank God. That's all that Humanity is saved. I mean, well, not really, but the animals are. <laughs> all right. Next question. Uh, Sally Shipton says Pilates. Uh, great for beginners and easy to do with nothing but a yoga mat floor. Uh, so, yeah. Mm. Like you acknowledge that when you were just first getting into fitness, a lot of what you did was just was, yoga. Yeah. I yeah. Don't... I think that's a great idea. I might do this actually, you know. Pilates. My flexibility could be better. Maybe I'll. Uh, Let's do try yoga and reach our the... toes tonight, Ben. I can touch my toes, baby. Can you like <laughs> lay? Can you put your absolutely? Can you put your palms flat on the ground? Oh, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. We'll we'll get there in two weeks. We got Come two on. weeks. A little <laughs> okay. bit more every day. We're gonna I'll stretch t- you I'll out. I'll tell you, I can touch my palms to the floor okay. uh, by the end of the two weeks. And from Janu and Cats. Uh, check YouTube for a video series about a topic you want to learn more about. I've been homebound mm. on and off for the last three years due to severe anxiety and OCD. And during that time, I've learned a lot of information about historical leaders from Europe and Russia, how to refinish furniture, how to make different crafts, etc. There are even whole college lecture series uploaded. Wow. I'm impressed. How about that? You can at find the productivity and the self-discipline to like go and learn all of these different skills. <laughs> and there's like actually educational content on YouTube. No. Not just simply now logical and Troom Troom videos. <laughs> <Shut> <laughs> or they could just watch simply now logical videos, you know. Keep keep that ad revenue up. <laughs> it's funny. I, I think it's no matter what you you watch and what yeah. genre, I think it's important to watch a variety of things do you know what i mean like from different channels from different people so you can just get kind of a better grasp on what's out there rather than just only watching one person or listening to one person's viewpoints on a particular topic i feel like that's a good practice in just anything in, in life it's like when you're doing research for a university paper you don't just cite the same authors over and over right you got to go to yeah. multiple authors and find multiple sources to kind of substantiate your argument and ultimately like your thoughts on something so mm-hmm. i feel the same way with just consuming content that's fair so if someone wants to learn how to do nail art they shouldn't only they shouldn't watch only well, simply nail art video. there's not much on my channel anyways <laughs> Haha, <laughs> funny, but no. but yeah, no, you should watch a bunch of different nail channels if you want to learn how to do acrylics. You know, don't just watch Susie Nail Career Education, although she is amazing and I, I love her. Mm-hmm. But you would watch a few channels similar to hers to learn about the process. Yeah, I think this do is also, research. this is a good reminder to me that outside of the bubble of like YouTube personalities who are mostly making content about themselves and increasingly just content about the fact that they are famous YouTubers. There are tons of people out there putting a lot of work into content that you could learn a lot from. And they're not getting millions of views yeah. and they're not being invited to YouTube conventions or VidCon or Creator Summit or things like that. But mm-hmm. there, there is there are some hidden gems on YouTube if you want to learn some specific niche topics, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah yeah learning go learning <laughs> take this time and learn some shit you know yeah all right well that's it i hope i hope you have some idea of what you want to do if you're stuck at the house i got some good ideas for, you got some i ideas? think i'm gonna bake some stuff i'm definitely gonna paint my nails yeah there you and go. you know maybe i'll throw a banana in the bed to have some fun <laughs> <laughs> okay we're on the same page then <laughs> Uh, on a more sincere note, I hope everyone's okay out there, mm-hmm. that you're doing all right, your mental and physical health. Please uh, wash your hands, stay safe, do all that stuff. and uh, Respect other people, too, during this time. Yeah. And how other people might be more afraid than you. Yeah. We're, we're all in this together. Hopefully, this sort of brings out a more kind of the, the community in our society yeah. that seems to be lacking most of the time. Yeah. We're all in this together. Because mm-hmm. we all might get the virus. So <laughs> <laughs> we're all in this together. So, 
All right. So on that note, I just want to apologize really sincerely to Lord DIY. We were supposed to have her on the podcast today, but we ran out of time and we, we just wanted to maintain some distance between us. I like her. Yeah, that's fine. I do too. That's <laughs> okay. why I wanted to have her on the podcast. I don't understand what you're doing with these end of these like, sorry, apology things. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. Oh we're going to see you next Taco Tuesday and talking about something probably a little bit less serious. <laughs> Don't forget, if you're bored, you can catch up on all of our podcasts. We already have four out now. This is the fifth. You got That's hours exciting. of content. Hours and hours. More, <laughs> you can just listen to, to it come. again. <laughs> There's hidden gems in each podcast I hear. If you listen to it again, you'll pick up on a different version of it. Probably not. <laughs> you can probably just listen to it once. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching or listening. And we'll see, see y'all next time. Bye. Bye.